Hello, welcome to the communication system lecture series. So, this lecture slide is basically the continuation of the topic that frequency modulation which we have started to discuss after medicine. So, in this lecture, uh, we basically look at how we can approximate the bandwidth of a FM signal, right? So, I assume that you already have some basic idea of angle modulation, particularly the phase modulation and frequency modulation. Also, we have seen how we can generate the narrowband and wideband FM signal and how we can calculate the spectrum of a FM signal. Okay. So, this is the just the um, I guess uh, <coughs> this is a recapitulation of the things that we have discussed in the last few classes that is FM with what will be the FM signal with a sinusoidal massive signal, right? So, here we have um, the, the massive signal that is MT equal to the AM cos of 2 pi FMT. We have carrier signal CT equal to AC cos 2 pi FCT and the corresponding FM signal will be ST equal to AC cos of 2 pi FCT is beta 2 sin 2 pi FMT, where this beta is the modulation index, right? So, you know what is the expression for beta, how to calculate beta, everything you know, right? So, then we also seen that uh, in the um, in the previous lecture we have seen that how we can calculate the spectrum of fm signal right so this is how we can derive a different expression for st from this from this expression right from this ST expression, how we can derive a different expression of ST, right? So, you know that is, uh, so I think you remember that if you use the concept of complex envelope, complex envelope of passband signal, right? So, FM signal is basically the passband signal. So, if you apply the concept of passband signal, uh, complex envelope of passband signal, then we can derive an expression of ST which is given by this formula, right? I think you remember the, uh, the steps to compute the complex envelope of passband signal, right? So, first you have to do the, you have to derive a analytical signal by taking the help, by adding up the uh, original signal with the Hilbert transform of the that passband signal and then uh, shifting the analytic so we will we'll get an analytical signal and then shifting that analytical signal we can uh, into the baseband we can get a complex baseband, baseband equivalent signal of that passband signal right so we can so we can get an we can uh, we can get this kind of um, expression where st can be expressed as a um, summation of uh, uh, summation of different cos cosine signal right so this is basically a fourier series right and this ac chain chain beta that's just that's a basal function chain beta is the basal function of first kind of order n right so, this Fourier transform of ST is very straightforward, right? So, this is basically summation of impulses. This is simply the summation of impulses, right? The Fourier transform of passband FM signal, right? So, this is basically um, the summation of uh, 
summation of impulses right so the spectrum of the pass band fm signal is basically a series of impulses right so it will be looked like this simply it will be looked like this simply it will be looked like this right series of impulses and centered around fc fine this is fc our fc so it is centered around fc and in the right side you will get some get infinite number of impulses in the left side in the right and left side both side you will get infinite number of impulses right so so it is very straightforward from this that theoretically the fm signal has infinite bandwidth right so because it is spanning from the negative side from the from here to here you will get infinite bandwidth right so you know the definition of bandwidth right so but uh, <coughs> thing is that when we, we we want to transmit some signal we want to transmit some signal uh, over a channel we need to know the transmission bandwidth of that signal right otherwise how can we choose a signal how can we choose the channel right we need a certain amount of transmission bandwidth of a signal of him signal in order to send it over a channel so so now we'll discuss how we can approximate the significant effective bandwidth of this fm signal theoretically it has infinite bandwidth there is no doubt about this right so we'll approximate what would be the significant signal energy what will be the significant transmission bandwidth on which the signal energy will be located so maximum energy at what frequency range the maximum energy is located right so so how to calculate that right so one thing is that we we have to look at the the side band amplitude of the fm6 spectrum is there any is there any uh, correlation between them or any uh, uh, anything we can uh, infer from the from the side band amplitude of the fm spectrum with the frequency so one thing we can say that the side band amplitude of the fm spectrum decreases with increasing frequency but the now question is why how we can say this and so only way to we can very easily we can say this if we just look at the look at the the characteristics of the bessel's function that is the chain beta if we plot the chain beta with risk versus the n n means here the number of side bands so if i plot so beta is fixed for your system right beta is fixed beta is the modulation index so so if beta is so so if you look at the chain beta graph you will see that the chain beta is negligible for n greater than beta plus 1 what does it mean so jn suppose jn 3 jn 3 means jn of 3 means beta jn the jn curve the jn this jn curve for this three value if you look at this it will go it starts to decrease after beta be, after when beta becomes when n becomes greater than beta plus 1 right so it starts to decrease so so jn of 3 is negligible for n greater than 4 so treat this is helping us that so for a particular beta value the number of significant side band impulses will be simply beta plus 1 right so that is actually required for us right so we don't need to consider 
the whole spectrum so we don't need to consider the whole spectrum uh, right because here you are you are getting a infinitely long spectrum but this 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 the series of impulses are start to decrease when this n is starting to increase right at both sides so for a particular beta you will consider only beta plus beta plus 1 side bands in the right side of fc and beta plus 1 side bands in the left side right so from this equation now we can say that what would be the then what would be the approximate bandwidth and that is called the Carson's rule so according to this we can say that the bandwidth of the FM signal the approximate bandwidth of the FM signal will be will simply will be this because two if one side band was there then you know that the bandwidth is 2 fm if beta plus 1 side bands is there so you need 2 into beta plus 1 fm right so it's just like simple m m case right amplitude modulation for double side bands so here you are having 2 beta plus for when modulation index is beta your number of side bands is beta plus 1 so you will get twice into beta plus fm and simply if we put beta equal to sorry uh, so simply if I put simply if I put uh, beta equal to delta f by fm I will get this expression right so these two are the expression so bandwidth can be deter completely determined uh, or appro the approximate bandwidth of the FM signal is completely determined by the frequency deviations and the modulated frequency or modulation index and the the uh, modulation frequency right so so idea behind this Carson's rule is very simple so Carson's rule is applied to approximate the bandwidth of FM signal right and idea what is the idea be where from this idea comes the idea simply comes from this graph okay idea simply comes from this graph okay so that's J in beta is negligible for n greater than beta plus 1 okay so hence total number of significant sidebands in pulses will be beta plus 1 so bandwidth will be twice into beta plus 1 into fm so for very large values of beta when beta greater greater than 1 then it will be simply twice delta beta how you just need to apply here twice beta plus 1 into fm right so that will be 2 beta into fm so beta plus 1 will be beta right we can neglect beta plus 1 is approximate beta so 2 twice beta fm means twice delta f simply for very small values of beta bit bandwidth will be twice fm right so in that case we can neglect the beta so twice into fm so this towards to extreme case to bound to boundary conditions for very large values of beta so wide band fm we can simply write that bandwidth is the twice of delta f and for narrow band fm very narrow band fm the bandwidth is simply twice of the modulation frequency so this is the central idea behind the uh, the Carson's rule which is used to uh, approximate the, the uh, used to calculate the approximate bandwidth of the FM signal right so 
I think this is pretty easy. The idea is pretty easy if you understand how to calculate the spectrum from the uh, the general uh, from the complex uh, using the uh, concept of complex envelope of passband signal. And and uh, now <coughs> so in the subsequent lectures I will discuss uh, some more problems on this uh, from this FM signals and i think if you have any doubt please let me know and if you have any other any other feedback please feel free to share with me and uh, stay safe keep learning and meet you in the next video so that's all for for now and bye okay